Okay, in part three of capital structure in a perfect capital market, let's uh, try to wrap things up and maybe uh, summarize things a little bit if we can. There is a formula that we're going to be addressing from here on out. Uh, the value of a company equals the free cash flow divided by the weighted average cost of capital, the cost of financing. One of the assumptions we're going to make is that free cash flows are fixed. So when we change financing, the only thing we could possibly change in the company is this weighted average cost of capital. So we want to, if we want to find the optimal capital structure, we need to find that capital structure that will minimize the weighted average cost of capital. In our discussion to date, uh, with this particular uh, concept of perfect capital markets, since the weighted average cost of capital doesn't change, then there can't be a change in value to the for firm. So how else can we look at this? Let's think about beta, right? Beta sub u, the beta of an unlevered company equals the beta of a company. Beta sub e is the uh, levered company and B sub beta sub D is the beta of debt. So unlevered beta is a measure of the risk of the company as if it didn't have any leverage. Again, in our context in this company, that should also be equivalent to the assets beta. So the beta of a levered company should be equal to the beta of an unlevered company plus a premium. It's the premium of the differences between the two betas and the uh, debt equity ratio of the company. If the beta of debt is zero, then this is just the debt equity ratio times the unlevered beta. And we could do a little algebra here. It would be one plus the debt equity ratio times the beta of the, of the unlevered debt. But again, the basic idea is as you increase debt, you increase the beta of the equity of the company. So here we have a basic formula, right? Equity beta is 0.8. The debt equity ratio is 0.1. Um, we also are assuming here that the debt beta is zero or the uh, beta of debt is zero. And a company wants to increase its leverage so that the new debt equity ratio will be 0.5. So the question is, what's going to happen to the beta of the equity of the company in this levered uh, context? So we can see the formula here, beta unlevered, the unlevered beta, 0.73. If you increase the debt level, that's going to change to 1.09. Now we actually have a spreadsheet or a worksheet that will help us do this. It's called the asset beta worksheet. Here we have the beta 0.8. The debt equity ratio, since it's given to us, is 10%, 0.10. And we want to change that to 0.5. So the beta of this company, the pure play equity beta, is 0.72 or 0.73. And then when we add our debt to that radio, ratio, we end up with 1.09 as our beta. And obviously the, the worksheet uh, confirms the calculations from the previous slide. So what happens if the company increases its debt? It increases the beta of its equity. So now let's talk about some basic issues. What happens between leverage and earnings per share, right? We have a company here that has $10 million in EBIT. They have 10 million shares. Stock's trading for $750. And it's thinking about changing its capital structure by borrowing $15 million at 8% and using those proceeds to repurchase 2 million shares at that $7.50. So let's think. If they have no debt, right? This is before we do this, right? Since there's no interest, there's no taxes, EBIT is equal to net income. 
So the earnings, 10 million divided by a million, the earnings per share is $1. Now, if we recapitalize, what happens? 15 million shares at 8%. So our interest is going to be 1.2 million a year. That means our earnings are going to change. They're going to drop to 8.8 .8 million. So 8.8 .8 million divided by the 8 million shares, we now have $1.10 is earnings per share. So actually what? Earnings per share has actually increased with leverage. Does that mean that the shareholders are better off? Well, in reality, in our world, with where we have no taxes, no expenses, etc., no, because essentially all we've done is we've changed the risk of the earnings per share. So while earnings per share increases on average, right, it's also compensating for this additional risk. So LVI share price doesn't increase as a result of this transaction. What about dilution, right? Dilution refers to an increase in the total shares that's going to divide a fixed amount of earnings. It's sometimes incorrectly argued that issuing equity dilutes existing shareholders' ownership. So debt financing should be used because you don't want to dilute ownership of the shareholders. Again, remember the world we're in. We're in a world that has perfect capital markets. Here we have a company has no debt, 500 million in shares. They're currently trading at $16. They want to expand. So they're going to purchase a billion dollars worth of planes. And they're going to finance that completely with equity. So the current value, this is prior to the issue, is $8 billion. Suppose that they sell, again, 62.5 million shares at this $16 price to get that $1 billion that they need. So how is this ultimately going to look? The market value of its assets grows because of the additional billion dollars. The number of shares increases. But even though the shares have increased, the value per share is unchanged. $16 per share. So essentially what we're saying, as long as the firm sells the new shares at a fair price, there's no gain or loss to shareholders associated with the equity issue itself. The issue, right? The change in financing doesn't change value as long as we sell things at fair prices. Any gains or losses that the owners may uh, experience are all going to come from the net present value of the investments of the company. So again, it's the left-hand side of the balance sheet that is determining the value that goes to shareholders. And I will agree that this world, uh, this perfect market world, is kind of hard to grasp because that's a world we don't live in. As we move forward to later videos, we're going to add more and more reality. So I'll see you in the next video.